Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In-Depth. In today's episode, I'm going to review the Ballista Sniper Rifle. We're going to be going over range, damage, one-shot kills, unique sights such as the iron sight attachment, and many, many other things because this is a very, very unique sniper rifle. It has a lot of weird properties that none of the other sniper rifle have, so I would highly recommend that you stick around for the entire episode. You're going to get to see a lot of, uh, I would say, highly variable gameplay. I'm going to use pretty much every sight and every attachment available for this weapon at some different point in this commentary. Also, because I'll go ahead and spoil it for you a little bit. This is more of a quick scoping weapon. You're actually going to see me do some quick scoping for once. That's normally not my thing, definitely not in my comfort zone, but I did sort of kind of learn to quick scope, and you will see some clips of that. Also, I finally have my health problem figured out. It's not sorted out, or better particularly, but I do know what's wrong with me, so the next episode of In-Depth, or the next episode of my channel of whatever, is probably actually going to be a health update and not a gun review. So this is going to be the last gun review for a little bit, but let's skip to the actual gun review part. The Ballista is a medium damage sniper rifle. It doesn't do quite as much damage as the DSR-50 at 95 damage per shot. The DSR-50 does 98, and that's not a very big difference, but it is a little bit lower, but it does definitely do more damage than the SVU-AS down there at 70. What's much more important than the raw damage on these weapons are the body multipliers applied to sniper rifles. Sniper rifles get extra body multipliers, kind of like when you shoot somebody in the head with a regular gun. You kill them faster because it does more damage. Sniper rifles work in a similar way, except you get multipliers on the arm, chest, lower stomach, legs, all that sort of stuff. The multipliers on the ballista allow it to be a one-shot kill in the head, neck, chest, upper arms, and middle stomach or torso, basically the guts region, kind of like uh, upper abs down to guts, is also going to be a one-shot kill. However, if you're shooting in the lower arms in the groin region, which is going to be probably from lower abs down to testicles, and the legs, that's a two-shot kill. The big difference is, the compared to other weapons anyway, is that the DSR-50 is actually a one-shot kill down there in that lower ab to groin region. If you put a silencer on this weapon, the effect is even more pronounced. You're now only going to get one-shot kills in the head, neck, upper chest, and upper arms. The upper chest kind of stops just barely below the pectoral muscles. That's your one-shot kill region when you have a silencer, so there is actually a silencer penalty. The last sniper rifles you reviewed didn't have much silencer penalty, and if you use this weapon, you're definitely going to get some hit markers. It's not the DSR-50. It doesn't get as many one-shot kills as the DSR-50, but it is on par with the XPR, better than the SVU-AS, but if you're using the Ballista, you need to be prepared to get a few hit markers. You're not going to get a lot, especially if you're going unsilenced silence because you're only going to need two shots to kill from I would say lower abs down but you will definitely get some if you want to get the most one shot kills from this weapon obviously headshots help but what you want to do is kind of aim for the pectorals you want to aim for the breast for the uh, pecs the upper arms shoulders chest you don't really want to aim for the stomach for the groin for the head or any or well, the head's just a little bit more difficult you can do that though or for anything else the pectoral muscles like aiming for the heart is going to get you the most one shot kills with the ballista in hardcore mode, the ballista is always going to be a one-shot kill. Maybe if you're shooting somebody through a thick wall or something, it might take two shots, but the damage is very high, body multiplier is good. It's always going to be a one-shot kill, even with a silencer, one-shot kill. Usually through walls, it's going to be a one-shot kill. This weapon has okay-ish wall penetration. I can't say that it has the best, because the DSR-50 has the best due to the highest damage and, and whatnot, but the Ballista can definitely wall bang people. It just doesn't have quite the same body multiplier. So if you're wall banging somebody with a Ballista, what you're hoping for is you can kind of see their head poking up, and instead of shooting for the head, you'll shoot for the neck and for the chest. That'll still probably net you a one-shot kill. The weapon has a 95% movement speed. This is the same as all the other sniper rifles. Even though this one may feel faster and seem lighter, it actually moves at the same speed as the DSR and the SVU-AS. Also, like the DSR, it shoots very, very slowly. It shoots at 51 RPM, whereas the DSR shoots at 50 RPM. This is very, very slow, and it's bolt action. The bolt action is important because people that run secondary weapons like myself, you'll see, if you shoot and then immediately swap weapons and pull out your pistol to finish off somebody or get somebody that's coming up behind you, when you redraw your sniper rifle, you actually have to go through the whole bolt animation. There's no canceling the bolt animation. It's just like the KSG, just like some of the other sniper rifles or the older sniper rifles in Call of Duty games, you can't cancel that bolt action. You have to go all the way through it. So if you have the time, it's typically best to shoot and then let the bolt action complete before you change weapons because then when you redraw or pull your sniper rifle back out, you're able to shoot it uh, immediately just as soon as it comes out. But if you don't do that, you're going to have to go through the bolt action and a little bit of micromanagement there, but you can get in trouble. The point of this is it shoots very, very slow and don't forget to work your bolt before shooting again. 
The recoil pattern on this weapon is not applicable. Of course the ballista has recoil, of course it kicks, of course it has some accuracy problems. Well, not accuracy problems, recoil problems. However, it shoots so incredibly slowly, your sights are almost always going to be completely recentered by the time you're ready to shoot again, so the recoil isn't really worth discussing. The ballista's idle sway is actually very low. It has the second lowest idle sway of all of the sniper rifles in Black Ops 2. In the previous episodes, the SVUAS and the DSR-50, the the idle sway numbers were not yet published, or at least I didn't know where they were, so I was using my subjective judgment on the amount of sw idle sway, and I got things completely backwards, but now that the numbers are out, I do have an exact list of idle sway, uh, well, relative list of uh, what's going on in Black Ops 2. The most idle sway is on the DSR-50, which kind of surprised me because I thought it was the least or I was the most comfortable with it. And for those of you wondering, the idle sway is just how much your sights bob left, right, up, down when you're not holding your breath. The next highest is the XPR-50, which felt about, about right because it had about the same as the DSR. The Ballista actually has the third least idle sway in the game, or the second, you know, second, well, it's the most steady, or the second most steady. The SVU-AS, surprisingly, which I thought was an unsteady, wobbly sniper rifle, has the least. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and toss that in there. I guess I was wrong about that. That's how it goes. The Ballista is a steady sniper rifle, so you, accuracy is going to be your friend here. These attachments do increase the recoil. Like I said earlier, the recoil is pretty much never going to be a problem because of how slow it shoots, but I'll say maybe these change like the first shot uh, kick to steady time or something like that. I'm just going to include them for legacy purposes. The suppressor gives you 2%, dual band 5%, ACOG 10%. These attachments do not change the recoil, so the variable zoom, the ballistic CPU, and the laser sight. Again, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face, and I don't care how many messages you send me. FMJ does not increase damage, it does not increase multipliers, it does not increase anything, and it does not help you get more one-shot kills. It helps you wallbang people and nothing else. Please do not send me your proof of what FMJ actually does. The hipfire on this sniper rifle is very, very poor. It actually may be more poor than the DSR-50 because you have to worry about that stupid bolt animation and you can't work the bolt while you're sprinting and if you're trying to dodge people and shoot and hipfire and no scope and work the bolt, it can get very, very uh, cumbersome. The hipfire box itself is very wide, the rate of fire is very low, you have the bolt to deal with, even with a laser sight, which tightens up your cone but doesn't actually indicate where your bullet is going to go. It is incredibly difficult to hipfire with this weapon. I would almost always recommend avoiding it and I do not like the default scope on this sniper rifle uh, the other two I did like the default scope this one I don't know what it is I don't know if it's the shape of the crosshairs if it's the default level of zoom there's just something funny about it that I'm not comfortable with that I do not like and I, it's very subjective I can't change that the sights that I do like is I really like the ACOG sights on this weapon. Of all the sights I used, I was the most comfortable with the ACOG sights. I thought I would really like the iron sights. I ended up not liking them too much. I'm not sure what the deal with iron sights are. I know they're a little clunky and they have an unusual shape and they have a bar around them, but that's all. Some people are okay with that. I'm really not. But something about the feel of the iron sights makes it difficult for me to shoot, whereas the ACOG sight makes this gun very easy for me to use. As a matter of fact, I think my best gameplay with this gun was with the ACOG sights, but that's just my take on it. You might have a completely different take. This is a very important part of the in-depth episode. The aim down sights in and out time are 0.35 seconds compared to the 0.45 and from the previous episode. That's a little bit more than 10% uh, faster than the other sniper rifles, meaning that it has the fastest aim down sight in and out time. Matter of fact, it's the only sniper rifle that doesn't have the exact same and down, like all the other sniper rifles aim down sights and unaimed down sights at the exact same amount of time. This one does it faster, and because it does it faster than all the rest, it does it the same. That means it is the fastest, and what this means for you guys is that this is the best sniper rifle for quickscoping. I tried to quickscope with SVU, terrible. Done it with the DSR, the XPR, you can spam a little bit. But this one is just the best for quick scoping. You see the most quick scopers using it. Everybody in the Phase Clan, all the I think Optic. I'm not sure if they still do quick scoping and not all the big quick scoping guys. You see them gravitate toward the ballista for this reason. Even though it may get more hit markers than the DSR, you can aim down sights faster, and that is a huge, huge benefit. And that'll save your life way more than the little belly multiplier when you go for quick scopes. 
The reload time, or at least the reload animation, is 3.10 seconds. The reload cancel time is 2.3 seconds. Not quite as big of a gain there. Some of the other sniper rifles, if you reload, cancel, but you'll still probably find yourself doing it subconsciously. This is a slow reloading weapon. It is a slow reloading sniper rifle. Don't expect to do this fast. I didn't find fast mags or extended mags to be particularly useful because your regular magazine is 7, which is kind of like the DSR plus extended mags. The extended mags will take you up to 10, which isn't bad, but uh, with seven rounds and considering the rate of fire, I usually found myself having plenty of time to reload, always carried a secondary weapon. I didn't really need fast mags or extended mags with this weapon. If I had to choose one or the two, uh, I would probably go with the fast mags, but doesn't really need either one of them. This is the sniper of choice for quick scoping and what I would call mobility sniping. We already discussed the quick scoping component, but I would like to reiterate that it is very, very important for quick scoping. This is the quick scoping sniper rifle in the game. But for mobility, mobility sniping, it's also important because you can aim down sights and unaim down sights and move around with it a little bit faster. It also has a very slightly faster raise and drop time and sprint recovery time than the other sniper rifles, but these are on orders of 1 20th of a second. You probably are not going to be noticing these numbers and what I call mobility sniping is where you'll run and snipe one person and then you'll need to kind of unzoom and move and set up in a new location very very quickly and then zoom in and snipe it would be kind of like not quite quick scoping like you aim down sights and you've got about a second to a half a second to pick your target and shoot and then you got to move and flank and shoot and move that's what I do when I want to do mobility sniping um, not exactly quick scoping it's quicker than the tradi traditional sit in the back of the map and camp with the DSR 50 which is what I did in the previous episode totally doable with this weapon even though it has a lot of the same statistics as the other sniper rifles it's going to feel more mobile when you use it your choice in optics will very greatly and radically change the way you play with this weapon. If you play with the default scope, it's going to be a long range sniper rifle. If you play with a variable zoom, it's going to be like a medium range to mid map sniper rifle and you can zoom in and do more. Dual band, I feel, actually gives it, it doesn't change the range, I know that, but I'm able to pick off enemies at very long distances because it kind of highlights them. If you're going to run with the ACOG sight, you're going to be a close to middle range kind of sniper. That's the one that I was the most comfortable with uh, there on grind. You've seen most of the game play and if you run iron sights which is a unique attachment just for this sniper rifle it makes you a close range sniper only it's kind of like David von der Haar is like hmm I wonder how much people miss world at war let's give them a bolt bolt action rifle with iron sights which I really had fun with in world at war but unfortunately I didn't with this weapon I don't know what the deal with the DSR was or I, I just don't think I like the look of the sights it wasn't fitting me if it fits you you're probably really going to enjoy the iron sights it makes it very easy for to quick scope for those people that master it, but it didn't float my boat but this gun is very very different depending on what kind of optics you put on it I'm gonna show you my recommended class the way I used this weapon the way I had the most success was basically the same perks that I had on the other sniper rifles flak jacket toughness and uh, dexterity uh, flak jacket keeps me from getting blown up when I do feel like sitting back toughness so that my screen doesn't shake when I'm aiming down sights with what you'll see is the ACOG sight that's very important that screen shake can get me killed very very quickly the uh, dexterity perk allows me to recover from sprinting faster I always run a secondary weapon I have the picture of the TAC-45, that's normally my favorite secondary. You've seen me probably use the Cap-40 mostly in this video just because I'm trying to level it up. I'm only a few levels from being maximum on that one. I'm leveling up all my pistols while doing the snipers. And the attachments that I had the most luck with was the laser sight, uh, not yeah, the laser sight attachment along with the ACOG. I don't know what it was. Didn't like the iron sights, really like the ACOG. Could also do some dual band, but ACOG really floated my boat on this weapon. I was able to snipe the best with it. The laser sight tightens up my hip fire just a little bit it makes it remotely doable if I need to it changes the way you quick scope and the auto aim mechanic works to your benefit and it gives me something of a visual reference when I have to hip fire or before I line up my ACOG sight well guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out my previous episode, which was on the DSR-50, you can click the box on the left, it'll open in a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, which is going to be on the XPR, you can click that box, it'll also open in a new window. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.